Hello guys and welcome to another video in the series of Linux tutorials. In this video, we are going to talk about history command, history expansion and interactive search using Control R. So let's begin. History command is used to print the command that were run previously by our shell. If I only give here history, then it will give me all the commands that were run previously. Now by default it gives us two information that is the history event number or simply history number and then the command that were run. After that we can also give the argument here for instance if you only want to print the last 10 commands or last 20 commands then you can give the number as an argument. So if I press enter it will only give the last 20 commands which were run. Now if you want to search for any particular history command in that case you can write here history and use the pipe character and give here any particular history command name. For instance I can give the string as ls. So it will give me all the commands that have ls inside of it. Now let's look at the history expansion using the exclamation mark. Before that I will run here simple command that is the ls. Okay. Now when you do the explanation mark with explanation mark it will execute the last command that was executed. So the last command executed was the ls. So if I press enter this two exclamation mark is going to be replaced by the ls and then the ls command will be executed. So if I press enter you will see it is giving me the output of the ls and also it is printing here. Okay. Now let's say that you don't want to execute the command but you only want to print that what was the previously previous command. In that case you can write here uh, explanation mark, explanation mark then colon and after that p. Okay. So if I press enter you will see it will only give the name of the previous command. Now exclamation mark can also be used with the history number. For instance let's first find the history. Okay. Now let's say that I want to run this particular command again that is that has the number as 1527. In that case I can use the explanation mark and write here 1 5 2 7 okay if i press enter it will tell me the name and also it will execute that particular command okay so it will execute the command ls documents so if i press enter you will see the it is uh, telling me the name of the command and it is also executing it right and similarly if you want to only print it in that case you can write here not then the history number that is 1527 colon p Okay, so in that case it is only printing the name of the command which has the history number as 1527. Now in place of giving here history number you can also give the relative number. Okay, so for instance if I write here history then you will see this particular thing is the latest. Okay, so this will be taken as the number 1 then this will be number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, 6. 7 okay like that so let's say that i want to print the last seventh command in that case you can write here not then dash and after that 7 okay and i will give here p so it will not execute it so if you see from here first second third fourth five six and seven okay similarly you can give here eight so i'll write here not dash uh, it would become nine okay so this will be cl if you want to also execute it in that case just remove this part okay now other than writing here numbers you can also provide the string for that let me first clear the screen and let me just write some commands okay so first one is the ls sh and then ls dash l and then i will write the simple ls now let's see the history last five commands okay so with the exclamation mark you can give any string also for example i can give here ls okay and then i will give the p now it will print the latest command that was run which has the string as ls so if i pr press enter you will see it was ls only similarly i can give here for instance find okay and i will only give here to print so if i press enter this was the latest command which was run that has the find string inside of it now let's clear it and go to the documents Okay, now there is one more thing that is the not with the dollar. Okay, so what it will do, it will find the last command and it will give the argument that was used by the last command. For instance, if you see the last command is this one and the argument given to this particular command is the document. So if I press enter, you will see it will it is giving me the output as documents. Okay, and after that it is also trying to 
uh, execute this particular command which is actually not a command so we can also write here not dollar and colon p okay in that case it will only give me the name of the argument now one thing to notice here is that the not is getting expanded for instance if i write here echo and i write here this is good and i'll write i will also write here not not okay so now if you notice here two things that first of all the not not operations are taking place so whenever we were using the not not or not with number or not with a string first of all the command was showing up and then the output of the previous command okay so that is what happened right now so not not tell me what the what was the previous command that is the this one and after that after executing of this command what will be the output okay so not not is getting replaced with the previous command so the question here is that if i want to print not as a character then how will i do it so in that case what you can do you have to switch off a shell option for instance if i you see set dash o then there will be lot of shell option that can be on or off okay and we will talk about these shell options in the next video in detail but for the expansion we have something uh, an option that is the hist and okay let me grab it grab okay then you will see that is the history expand so whenever i am using the not it is getting expanded now if you want to switch it off in that case you can write here set plus o and after that you can give the name here so it is hist expand okay so if i press enter and now if i try to do echo this is good and give here not not then you will see it will not get expanded okay similarly i will not be able to use not now so let's say i'll write i am writing here not not then it will give me not not command not found so not not is not getting the not getting expanded and also if you see the list here then you will see this has been off to put it off we use the plus and to put it on we will use the minus okay so i'll write here minus and now if i do here grab hist then you will see it is on okay if i do here not not then you will see now it is also executing that particular command so this was the name of our command and it is executing that particular command okay so now let's clear it and talk about the interactive search in interactive search we press the key that is control r okay now it will ask me that which particular command you want to search for instance if i write here find then it will give me the most recent command that was run and that have find inside of it okay now if you want to move backward that means you want to search in the previous direction in that case you can press the key control r okay similarly if you want to go more back again control r control r control r i am moving in the backward direction okay and it it, it is telling me all the commands that have find inside of it similarly if you want to move forward direction then you can use the control s okay but currently i am not able to use the control s and the same problem you might also will face so for that i will pre first press the control c to end it and now i will write a command here that is s t t y dash i x o n basically many times our terminal traps the control s signal for its flow control and in that case our shell does not receive that particular signal that is sent by the control s in that case you can use this particular command and press enter okay now i will again do the control r and let's say let me find again the command that i have find inside of it now i will for moving backward i will write i will press control r and now to move further i will press control s okay so now you will see i am also able to move in the further direction and also in the backward direction okay now once it i am at the max if i again press the control s it will it will give me failed because after that there are no commands that have find inside of it okay now if you want to execute that particular command then you can press enter okay or you can do another thing that is i'll first press the control r you can press the right arrow key or left arrow key okay so if i press the right arrow key you will see the command has been copied here and now i i am able to edit this command also okay similarly if you want to search for any other command you can write here ls 
or you can give any particular string right and to move backward i'll press ctrl r to move forward i'll press ctrl s right arrow key to leave to copy it in the our shell and to edit it and then press enter to execute it so when dealing with the previous command ctrl r or interactive search is the best possible thing that you can use and also remember the action performed by this command is local if i close my terminal and again open it then the work done by this command is lost to overcome it you can use this you can put this particular command in a bash rc file okay so for that i have to go to the home directory and now i will open my bash rc file and here you can write this command okay so in this case what will happen whenever you will open your terminal this file will be executed and along with that this particular command will also get executed so i'll press ctrl o to save it and then ctrl x to leave it now let's clear the screen now by default our histories are getting stored in some particular file currently that particular file is the dot bash history okay so if i press a stick then you will see this particular file has our history of the command so if you view this file that is the bash history it will have all the commands that were run now always remember is that when we are writing here history then all these command that are particularly run in this session are not returned to the bash history file only when i am logging off from the system in that case only all the command will be returned to the bash history file now file names are stored in the variable that is the hist file all right so if you see here the file name is stated as dot bash history along with the path similarly if you see one thing that whenever i am writing here history and doing here wc dash let me do l then you will see there are only 1000 entries okay and then if you do dollar hist cache sorry i have to write here hist size okay that is also assigned with the 1000 now hist size tell us the number of the cached entries that are stored by the history command by default the number of cached entries are 1000 that is the reason when i am doing here history and writing here number of lines it is giving me only 1000 now if you view the file that is the bash history file and then do the wcl then you will see the number of entries that it, it is storing here is 1588 okay by default it might be 2000 right now if i do here echo of dollar hist file size now hist file size tell us the number of entries that are going to be stored by the dot bash history file or the file that is defined in the hist file location so currently it is set to the 2000 so maximum there will be only 2000 entries now you may wonder that if the hist file size is set to the 2000 then why it is 1588 the reason here is that before making this video i had cleared the entire content of this particular file that is the reason it is not even reached to the maximum of its limit okay so this particular variable is used when you want to specify the maximum number of history that should be stored in some particular file okay so now let me clear it and open the dot bash rc file right now here if you will see there are various option that would be written okay now it is highly likely that you will not see the file in this format the entries would be something different now hist ignore is used when you don't want to cache some particular commands for instance if i'm writing here ls comma colon find colon history in that case these particular three commands is not going to be cached by the history program now another useful variable that can be used is the hist control for instance let's say that you are writing the commands ls then ls these two are the same commands in that case you can write hist control ignore dupes that is the ignore duplicate in that case in the history when you will print the history it will be cached with the single entry only okay so if you don't want to cache the adjacent duplicates in that case you can write hist control equals to ignore dupes okay now ignore spaces means that any particular command that is starting with the space that is let's say space and then i am writing the ls so if you want to ignore the command which are in this form in that case you can write hist control equals to ignore space and if you want to include both the functionalities in that case you can write the ignore both it will act as the hist control ignore dupes and along with the hist control equals to ignore spaces now one last variable that can be used that is the hist 
time format. So let me close this with control X and currently if you see the value of his time format, it will be set as empty. Okay. So what I will do, I will change this value that is his time format. Okay. And I will give it to the something like let's say uh, percent D uh, uh, slash percent uh, M slash percent Y. Okay. And for time, I will give the percent T. Right. I will press enter and I will do the history and let's say 10. Now you will see along with the commands, it is also giving me the date and also the time. Okay. Now all these history related variable change should be made in the dot bash rc file so that whenever you will open the uh, terminal in that case the changes will be taken into effect. Okay. Currently if I will close my terminal and open again then in that case this particular thing will be again set to the null. Okay. But in case if I am putting it in the, the bash rc file in that case that particular command will be run again and it will be set with some values. Now there are couple of some important options that can be used with the history command in which first of all is the w okay dash w. Now as I said earlier by default the cached histories will only be written to the file when I am going to log off. Now if in case if you want to write the cache entries right now in that case you can write the option dash w and it will write all the entries in the file. So if you see our bash history file then you will see the entries had been written successfully right now let me clear it now sometimes you will also need to delete some particular history for instance currently if you see there are a lot of commands now let's say that i want to clean this particular history in that case you can write here history dash d and then the history event number that is the 1612 okay so i'll write here 1612 after i will press enter this particular entry will become 1612 and this will become 1613 so every entry will be shifted in the backward direction okay so if i press enter do again the history then you will see this particular command that has the cl this particular entry will be removed okay so if you see this particular entries has been removed now one last option that i want to tell you is the dash c option okay so currently you will see there are a lot of cache entries that are available in case if you want to clear all the cache then you will you can write here dash c okay so if i press enter and do the history then you will see only one particular command is showing that is this one and all the previous one has been cleared so in cases if you want to clear all the cache histories entry in that case you can use the dash c option Okay, so history command is useful from time to time, but control R feature is always very helpful, right? So that's all for today, guys. I hope you like the video. If you have any doubt, please comment it down. Thanks for watching and I have to see you in the next video.